Yo, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. As usual, I'm going to let the clip play and then I'll address some of the statements afterwards. Michael Jordan was ruthless with his opponent, ruthless with his teammates. He was as tough as they get. Sometimes he'd walk by the bench and go like, you know, to all the guys, you want to win? You want to win this game? And he would say to me, get so-and-so out, he don't want to play tonight. He was hard on all of us, and he rode us and lifted the level of intensity and competitiveness of practice every day. He was such a fierce competitor to where he would get into it with his teammates in practice. One time, he actually punched Steve Kerr. And Kerr laughs about it now, but you got to figure that in the, in the moment, that that's not something that you, that you take lightly. That particular day, it got a little ugly. There's a lot of trash talking, and I remember just feeling disrespected. And so I sort of went back at him. The whole thing ended pretty quickly, but it was an important moment because his theory was if you couldn't handle the pressure that he could put on you in practice, wow. there's no way you'd handle the stress of the finals. My favorite basketball clip in the world, finals game six. Five seconds in regulation. Michael Jordan sitting on the bench, tired as hell. Ain't tied at 86. And he looks at Steve Kerr and says, they double me all the time. I'm going to kick it to you. He comes up. I'll be ready. And guess what? It is Michael Jordan time. Scotty Pippen looking for Michael Jordan. Shuts the point. Five on the point. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Greatness wants people around him that they can also trust. Alright, so I'm going to address some of the statements that were made in this video. He was as tough as they get. Sometimes he'd walk by the bench and go like, you know, to all the guys, you want to win? You want to win this game? And he would say to me, get so and so out, he don't want to play tonight. Can you blame him? I mean, can, can you blame him? I mean, we, we've seen the clips of uh, this last dance, the last dance that's coming up, coming now, our release date was moved up to April 19th. We've seen the clips. Michael Jordan's on record. He said he wanted to win, quote, at all costs. So if there was a guy on the roster, on the team, who clearly, for whatever reason that night, wasn't trying to win at all costs, can you blame him for at least voicing that to to Doug Collins to say, look, look, man, get this guy out. He's not, he's not, he's not about it tonight. He's not feeling tonight. Whatever. Can you blame him? I don't blame him one bit. He was such a fierce competitor to where he would get into it with his teammates in practice. One time, he actually punched Steve Kerr, and Kerr laughs about it now. But you got to figure that in the in the moment, that that's not something that you that you take lightly. That particular day, it got a little ugly. There's a lot of trash talking, and I remember just feeling disrespected, and so I sort of went back at him. The whole thing ended pretty quickly, but it was an important moment because his theory was if you couldn't handle the pressure that he could put on you in practice, there's no way you'd handle the stress of the finals. And that is the point, ladies and gentlemen. That is the point. Michael Jordan's uh, outlook was, if I can't break this person, then the pressure of the playoffs, the pressure of the finals is not going to break this person. This is someone I can trust. You know what I'm saying? Um, and for someone who, who was, <laughs> basically, he has a, he's a compulsive winner and a compulsive competitor to the point where, I mean, luckily he, he, he was able to be um, you know, his, his he was able to apply it to something positive. You know, he wasn't out there gambling crazy. Of course, we know he had a gambling issue, but he wasn't like gambling his whole life away and doing all these crazy things. He was able to apply it to something positive, you know, trying to win basketball games, you know, at a professional level. But clearly, he understood that he couldn't win himself. He couldn't win by himself. Otherwise, he wouldn't bother with any of the other guys. He wouldn't need to to bring them up or build them up to anything because he could do it by himself. So it makes sense 
they, yeah, I'm going to get on these guys in practice and ride them in practice so hard so that either A, I break them and they can't, I already know I can't trust them, or B, I don't break them or they get stronger in it. So when the time comes and when their moment comes, because Michael in his mind is saying, I can't do it by myself, I can trust this guy because I've been on his ass in practice and he didn't break or he got stronger and I know I can trust him now. You know what I'm saying? So better that than to be their damn friend and then when you need them in the finals, when their moment comes, they're not ready. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it, it, it makes perfect sense for someone like Michael Jordan whose sole focus was on the team winning would, would go about practice this way. My favorite basketball clip in the world. Finals, game six. Five seconds in regulation. Michael Jordan sitting on the bench, tired as hell. Ain't tied at 86. And he looks at Steve Kerr and says, they double me all the time. I'm going to kick it to you. He comes up. I'll be ready. You hear that? You hear what Steve Kerr said? When it comes off, I'll be ready. Not, uh, if it comes off, you know, I'll look for it. Or, like, like you could tell there was no doubt, no worry. Like, he, he wasn't afraid of the moment. Because he had been dealing with Mike in practice the whole time. This is nothing. Um, I mean, several players... Like, I know I can think of B.J. Armstrong specifically. Um, I've seen him in interviews talk about their practices and how practice was more intense than any of the games. Dealing with Mike in practice and the, the, the environment he would create in practice was way more intense than the games. So now we're here, game six of the NBA Finals, less than a minute left. <clears throat> I think it's, this is the Bulls. It's really their last position coming down the stretch here. And Mike looks over and says, look for the double team. And Steve Kerr, without hesitation, full confidence. When it comes off, I'll be ready. And, and, and that's a result of the environment that they practice in. Practice hard so that the games are easy. And guess what? It is Michael Jordan time. Scotty Pippen looking for Michael Jordan. Checks the point. Five on the play. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Look at the look on Steve Kerr's face. You see any uh, any worry there? Any doubt there? Now, granted, he you know he's already made the shot, but you can you can tell he's locked in. He was locked in on the moment. He was ready. He was ready. And when you watch the the replay of that of that play in full speed from the game angle, he literally caught the ball and shot it like no hesitation. Like he caught it and it was in the air. So he he was beyond ready. He was prepared for that moment based off of the environment that Michael Jordan created in practice. His greatness wants people around him that they can All right, so that's going to be it on this one. Um, what do you think? If you were a player, would you have liked to play under a player like Michael Jordan who, who created a tense atmosphere? Or, you know, someone like maybe playing under the current Golden State Warriors who keep things loose, what would you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching the video. Peace. He no longer needs accomplishments to prove his case as the greatest player in NBA history. He just adds to it. And if this is the final chapter, what a way to close the book.